Hello and welcome to today's video. It's Morgana here as always. Today I'm going to be demonstrating this beautiful wintry snowy scene with a gorgeous sky and some skeletal winter grasses. And I'm beginning today with a few flowers pre-drawn and gone over with my Pebio masking fluid or drawing gum that you saw just there. Uh, only a few, these are going to be the skeletal part of my drawing, which means they're going to be white. Uh, they will show up over the, uh, the paint I'm going to put on. And you can see I'm just taping off my horizon line. I want a nice clean edge here, nice and straight. This is uh, the easiest way I have found so far to do it. You can see uh, just paint, ordinary painter's uh, masking tape. Uh, my colours are listed there. I will also pop a list in the description. And you can see I'm beginning, like I usually do, by wetting the top part of the paper, which is going to be our lovely sky, uh, with my extra large uh, Pro Art Ron Ranson uh, Harte brush. Uh, it's a lovely brush for uh, getting a lot of water or a lot of paint into a large area nice and quickly. So now I've let that water settle just for a couple of seconds so it's not dripping off the paper and I'm coming in with my first colour which is a lovely pale wash of raw sienna just dabbing that on a little bit there, not too much uh, I don't want to turn the sky green uh, or entirely yellow but just putting in a few good sweeps there the brush I'm using today for the sky is a new brush of mine which I'm very excited to use um, one of my Christmas presents um, is a Princeton Neptune uh, Mottler brush sized uh, one inch there uh, it's designed to replicate uh, the abilities of squirrel hair brushes but it's entirely synthetic um, it's very adaptable uh, so far I've found that it carries an awful lot of water and paint as you can see here I'm just using it to sweep in some lovely swathes of cerulean blue uh, to create the sky here and if the cerulean looks a little different to you then uh, well you've got a very good eye because I've mixed it with a tad of Prussian blue as well uh, this is just to cool it down a bit I think cerulean uh, is quite a warm blue, it's a warm hue, very nice and comforting, but uh, seeing as this is a snowy scene, I decided to cool it off, just adding a little bit of that Prussian blue in there to just make it a little bit more icy. And you can see I'm just using these nice diagonal sweeps, not quite going over the raw sienna I've already put in. I want the, uh, the water to carry the paint uh, and to blend the light and the blue beautifully. And you can see that even as I'm painting here, the colour is dispersing beautifully, the uh, very, very pale yellow and the blue are starting to uh, diffuse into one another and give us that lovely natural looking sky. I'm just using a little bit of tissue here to take some of the water off uh, as my, my painting board is set at a slight angle, uh, roughly 45 degrees, so that the paint will run for the wash. But that also means it runs down, <laughs> you can see it bellying slightly there. Um, that is the angle that I'm now going to set this uh, painting at uh, in order to dry. There we are, happy with the dry wash. It's all lovely and dry. You can see I've taken the tape off to reveal this lovely clean edge here. However, there is still a slight hint of pencil mark uh, where I drew my horizon line originally. So I'm now just going in very, very carefully uh, with a normal uh, pencil eraser and just getting rid of that. There you can see here just leaves that slightly greyish mark that we don't want. I'm just going to uh, rub out and brush away, leaving some nice clean white paper behind. Now 
Now, again, with my uh, little Neptune brush, I'm putting a little bit of detail in the foreground here. This is a snow painting, so I want to leave plenty of white paper. So I'm using a damp brush. It's not very wet. You can see I'm brushing the flat edge very lightly across the paper, making uh, the best use of this lovely uh, textured cold pressed paper, uh, just to get some lovely dry brush here. The uh, imitation of a uh, sparkle on a lovely bank of snow. And I'm pulling the lines in two directions uh, because I'm going to have a lovely uh, shallow diagonal bank of grasses going along from left to right. That's why my diagonal is there. But I also want to uh, put in a little bit of distance at the back. So I'm going uh, sweeping in horizontally as well. And what I'm actually doing here uh, on this side, I'm sorry, you can't see terribly well because uh, my hand is in the way. But I'm just using the brush to sweep upward slightly and put in uh, some distant trees, very, very nice distant blue trees. You can see here a little bit clearer. I'm just using the very tips of this brush with only a little paint and just sweeping it up into the sky. So now I'm starting on my uh, grasses and reeds. To begin with, I'm putting in a nice dark colour. This is Payne's Grey and I'm using a medium sized uh, stippling brush. Uh, it doesn't have to be this. Uh, this is simply the one that I have to hand. I believe it's a Jatar medium stippling brush made from hod bristles. Uh, and you can see I'm not being too careful with it. I am just following that lovely sweeping a diagonal line and just mottling in a little bit of darkness a little bit of a uh, little bit of color here to just give me the uh, beginnings of some foliage and now I'm coming in with a small round brush and I'm just starting to define it a little bit more using this paint spray again to put in the first dark colors uh, sweep in some lovely reeds and sedges and grasses there I always enjoy this technique of putting in the first initial uh, little mottled bits of hedgerow and grass with the uh, stippling brush and then using a, uh, a small round brush to begin to uh, pull a little bit of definition out of the foreground. What you will also begin to see here, as I use this dark colour, is one of the uh, flower heads that I painted on using masking fluid is starting to appear. And I'm just scrubbing on that extra little bit of Payne's Grey just to get the background. And you can see that lovely little skeletal bit of cow parsley has appeared in white uh, against those reeds and against those, uh, those natural grasses there. Once I remove the masking fluid, it will appear even whiter, but for now I just want to put in enough dark paint so that I know that when I eventually remove the masking fluid, um, 
these flowers and grasses that I've already prepared uh, will show through. And now I'm coming in with another brush. This, I believe, is a highly underrated brush. Um, I'm using a De La Rowney Aquafine Synthetic Fan Brush. Uh, it's a size 2, which I believe is a small to medium size. And, uh, well, I believe we've all seen these used to great effect uh, in some Bob Ross videos when he paints his uh, happy little trees in. Uh, the fan brush is a favourite for pine trees and paths and, well, pretty much anything. Um, I think it's uh, fallen out of favour in watercolour slightly, um, but I, uh, I received this for Christmas as well and I must say I'm really delighted with the texture it's giving me at the moment. You can see I'm just sweeping the, uh, the bristles of that brush up along the page and it's giving me this lovely natural looking sweep of reeds there. Uh, this is Burnt Umber I'm using, uh, a lovely warm tone. I think it contrasts really nicely with the Payne's grey that's already there and the uh, cooler tones that are in the sky. You can see another little sliver of cow parsley appearing there. Thank you, Masking Fluid. <laughs> very impressed with these new brushes that I've been using, the fan brush and the uh, the little mottler brush that I was using earlier. If anyone's interested uh, in learning a little bit more about these new brushes, a little bit of tips and techniques, then I will be uh, popping on a video regarding that on my Patreon page. You'll be able to find the link uh, down below for a little technique video for those two brushes. Uh, but for now, I'm back to stippling away with my stippling brush. Uh, you can use any brush really to do this, but uh, a nice sturdy brush seems to do the best job here. I'm just blotting in a little bit of extra detail. Um, want to keep the foreground a little loose, but still retain uh, enough detail for it all to be recognisable and all to sit nicely against that, uh, that delicate sky wash. And all I'm doing here is using an extra fine brush uh, to start adding a little bit of shading and detail into those lovely shapes uh, that the fan brush has already given me. And I'm just going to show you quickly here my stippling brush. I've pressed it quite flat uh, so that the bristles give you that lovely sort of flat little edge where you can get some lovely detail and some lovely texture here along this uh, the lower part of this uh, grassy bank. Now you can see here these lovely skeletal flowers I was talking about earlier. I'm going to uh, echo those in some darker paint as well, uh, just for a little bit of contrast and a, a little bit of uh, extra detail in this foreground. So what I'm doing is coming in with uh, my very, very fine brush. Uh, this is my, um, oh, where is it? My <laughs> Masterstroke uh, Pro Art Miniature Synthetic Brush size uh, 4 slash 0. It's lovely and fine. 
and you can see here that it's allowing me to uh, recreate these lovely skeletal cow parsley uh, blooms uh, but I'm using Payne's Grey to do so just echoing the shapes that are already there adding in a little extra detail and a little bit of excitement into this foreground You can see I'm still trying to keep it quite loose and quite rough. I'm not taking too much time over these, but I do enjoy the contrast of the slightly uh, more detailed back, um, foreground sorry, against the, uh, the looseness of the marks we made earlier with the fan brush and with the stippling brush. I think it's a really lovely contrast. Uh, so I'm just using my extra fine brush to just bring a little bit of that tightness back into the painting. And now you see I really just couldn't resist putting a handful of birds into that lovely clear sky. And I'm just using my very fine brush again and a little bit of Payne's Grey and just throwing in uh, some little bird friends here. The key is to just slightly overweight the central part of that, um, that V shape just to give them a little bit of body and to save them from just being those ordinary uh, v birds that you sometimes see. Just vary the wing placement, vary the weight of your brush strokes and uh, vary them in the sky as well. I've just sort of thrown them hither and thither where I think they should be. Just think they give a nice little extra bit of life into this painting. Of course you don't have to do this, you can uh, keep your sky beautiful and clean if you like but uh, I love throwing a few birds into my paintings. So now I'm done with my birds. This is the final step, or rather the semi-final step. I'm removing the masking fluid that I put on earlier. So with a clean finger, you can just rub lightly against the paper and it will take off uh, that latex. And you can see that the uh, patterns that I put on earlier are starting to appear uh, in that lovely uh, bright white of the paper showing through uh, against the darkness of the uh, paint that's already on there. I always find this to be a particularly satisfying step of painting with masking fluid. It's always lovely to see what you're left with once the, uh, the latex comes off and you've got this lovely white paper peeking through. However, you can see that it has left some, uh, some beads of latex on my painting so I'm just using a clean dry brush to sweep them all gently away. And now this is the last step of the painting. Um, I decided that the lines left by the masking fluid were just a little bit too bright and a little bit too uh, 
contrasting. They look like they've just sort of been plonked on. So I'm just using my fine brush and a little bit of extra Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber. Just scraping over and almost dry brushing a little bit. Putting in some of the wreaths over those stems and just uh, working them a little bit more into the painting. Making them look like they're sprouting up from the uh, middle of the clump rather than just being uh, plonked on the top there. And here we are with the finished painting. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you love the painting as much as I do. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Uh, like I said earlier, if you're interested in seeing a more detailed uh, video regarding the new brushes of mine uh, and some tips and techniques for using them, then please head on over to my Patreon page. Um, otherwise, thank you for watching, friends. I hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope to see you all again in the next one. So that's goodbye for me for now.